Hello, and welcome to the fourth edition of UTA Spotlight. I'm Angel Rodriguez. Today we'll talk about how UTA's growing enrollment is affecting programs on campus. We'll take you to an interview with the first openly gay NFL player. And finally, we test the history knowledge of some UTA students. Thank you for joining us. This is UTA Spotlight. As enrollment grows at UTA, resources on campus can be affected. Our reporter Nick Tarrant takes us to one department that is being impacted. Small in size, deteriorating conditions, and little access are all opinions some students have expressed about the practice rooms on the third floor of the Fine Arts Building South section. This prompted Emily Long, music performance graduate student, to voice her thoughts for change. If there is a student body by students for students who can help other students, then absolutely. With encouragement by music education junior Brandon Behrens, Long attended the September 26th Student Senate meeting for her peers to listen. There's simply just not enough hours in the day and enough rooms for all of us to get the time that we need on our instruments up here. The soundproofing ability of each room also doesn't keep outside noises out when practice time is needed. It's hard to pull your own sound away when you're thinking, gosh, the player's just so loud. And it's hurting me to practice in these practice spaces more than it's helping me. Besides the percussion practice rooms, this is one of the 14 available for students to use, if available. Ideally, I would like to use one every day, but I don't try every day because when I'm here, usually they're not open. Since I've been here in 2004, little has been done in you know, improvements inside the practice rooms. The number of students enrolled in the program has risen, which makes sharing difficult when a minimum of two hours of practice each day is needed. When you have better students, they're more driven. When they're more driven, they practice more. We want to see things continue to flourish and grow. I love UTA, I love the faculty here, and that's why I'm here. But as a student who's maybe looking at other things besides faculty, if they see that, hey, UT is not really upgrading their facilities, they don't have that amazing hall, they don't have a lot of practice rooms, it's going to look like they don't, might not have a whole lot of resources. Barron suggests the university invest more money into the program to expand the number of practice rooms. We first need to have the university recognize how great we are and build upon that from there. Long plans to work with Student Senate to find a possible solution. I am hoping that Hopefully the School of Music will gain more outside support for upgrading our facilities. Nick Tarrant, UTA News. The thoughts and opinions of the students are being taken into consideration at the next Senate meeting. This past week, the first openly gay NFL player visited UTA's campus for Pride Week. Our reporter, Nada Perez, sat down with him in a one-on-one -on -one interview. Multicultural Affairs hosted Pride Week 2017 last week, and I sat down with the keynote speaker, Michael Sam, before his speech. Hi, this is Narda Perez with UT News, and I'm interviewing Michael Sam today. He will be speaking at the Pride Week event tonight. Uh, so why do you think it's important for universities and colleges to host events like Pride Week? I mean, I think it's any uh, special events. It doesn't have to be Pride or LGBT. Uh, it just be celebrating uh, whatever, whatever week it is. But uh, in this particular week, uh, from, because I'm here at UTA uh, for doing Pride Week, I think this is very important and very cool. I'm curious to know, what are some of your short-term and long-term goals for the future? It has to be doing with helping people. That's what I think about it. That's what my passion is. Is it continue on to help people. Do you mind giving me a little snippet of what you're going to be talking about today during your uh, keynote? So, uh, tonight it would just be pretty much be uh, sharing my story. Uh, kind, of, a lot of people in the media uh, have kind of misinterpreted my story, and I want to kind of share my story and from the real source. What would be your biggest message to the uh, campus LGBTQA community? It's be pretty much. I mean, there's a lot of work to be done. Like, and it's a, lot, a lot of progress has been over the last recently, the last couple of years of uh, progression. But it, the work is not done yet. And hopefully, you know, after tonight, people will just like, yes, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, don't be hiding in the shadows or be quiet around social media. Actually, go out and do something uh, because it's, it's a long road. We still got a lot of work. To for more information on events, you can visit events.uta.edu. UTA's 122nd anniversary will be celebrated this week. Our reporter, Maritza Esquivel, went around campus to test some knowledge of the students. Uh, 
I would say 1816. Oh, B. B? Yeah. 86? Oh, wait, excuse me. 1960. <laughs> okay, cool. Go <laughs> so top, down. 1895. Shoot. Go go B again. Agriculture. Is it B? Arlington Military. No, it's A. A. Oh, it's College. I would say E. Um, is it, what was the third answer? Was it Blue? Blue Raiders. Blue Raiders. E. None of the above. Yeah, that was a given. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, I think I know this. The E, H, Care for it? Care for it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't know any of them. The annual celebration will be taking place this Wednesday at the Library Mall starting at noon. Well, that's all we have for this edition of UTA Spotlight. I'm Angel Rodriguez. It was a pleasure being able to produce and bring you this edition of UTA Spotlight. And thanks to my videographer, Brenda Dela Cruz. Thank you for watching UTA Spotlight.